Hello, this one's about Neil Innes, the musical and comedy genius who was one of the two mainstays of the Bonzo Dog Duda band. I'm a supersonic guy. Who went on to work with Monty Python. Rutland Weekend Television with Eric Idle and the Innes Book of Records on the BBC. And then formed the Ruttles with Eric Idle, but he basically wrote all the songs. Did you think that song? Jehovah's Witness was ringing your bell. My first memory of meeting him, well not even meeting him, was probably sometime in the 1980s. I was in a pub in Soho with some friends and somebody said, look over there, isn't that Neil Innes and George Harrison? Or they might have just said George Harrison. But they noticed that we'd noticed them, so they basically left and that's like the way of it. Now, George Harrison and Neil were very good friends right the way up to George's death and they used to work together. Not many people know that, but they lived quite close. And so they'd um, spend a lot of time in each other's houses and things and they do a lot of work together. And they weren't making albums or anything, they were just writing songs for fun, I think. I'm just gonna come in here and say, if you like this, please like this video and try and watch it all the way to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, YouTube think I'm a terrible YouTube person and they penalize me. And subscribe, get subscri subscribing because then you get all these things early. I'm starting to do a few shorts, which are less than one minute long. So you can't even have the excuse that it's too long. I also worked with Bob Kerr, who was the trumpet player in the Bonzos for a little while, and also he was the lead singer in the new vaudeville band who did Wings After Cathedral. You could have done something, but you didn't try. So Bob and I were partners in a music agency, and Bob had Bob Kerr's Whoopi Band, which is basically a tribute to the Bonzos before tributes were a thing. I used to play in London pubs mainly and also college balls and they used to be very popular. Anyway, I was Bob's partner and I think I met Neil, I, I can't remember specifically, by the year 2003 when I was at the 100 Club putting on shows again, I was scouting around for people to put on and I thought of Neil's and he answered and we were very friendly and we had a little chat about it and he says why don't we do a Ruttle show? So we ended up by doing lots of Ruttle shows at the 100 Club and elsewhere. I became the Ruttle's agent in effect and we used to put together shows and do tours and things. And this lasted right the way up to his death in 2019, just after Christmas. We were planning to do a tour in 2020. It obviously would have happened because of COVID and everything, but that was the idea. He was gonna to go to the States again, because he, the Ruttles never really made it big in the States. I know it's a bit weird, but they were very big here. They played Glastonbury and places like that. And there's a rumor that Paul McCartney watched their show at Glastonbury because he was on the same year. I don't know if that's true or not. Over the years, we worked together. We were friends. He was a very quiet, personal man. Neil avoided conflict like no one else I knew. In fact, I tried to get him to give me a ruling once and he actually turned to me and said, Jim, I am not really the sort of person who wants to take sides on things. Think of me as Rupert Bear. <laughs> and there you go. So that was, that was Neil. Um, people took advantage of his uh, talent. For example, he wrote all the songs for the Ruttles, but he only ended up getting like half the royalties and all that sort of thing. And I know he wrote a lot of the Python stuff, especially in the early days. In fact, when John Cleese walked out of the Pythons before their last BBC One series, Neil was brought in as the um, um, sixth or fifth or whatever member of Monty Python and they did a lot more music and he did a lot more comedy. But when it came to spam a lot, I'm pretty sure that there was a th there was some sort of law thing because Neil didn't like talking about things like this but there was some kind of lawsuit bending which he was involved in because I think he'd just been rode out of the whole thing and I think it was just I think the last tour we did with the Ruttles 
would have been in 2019 and I think court had just ruled in their favour. Neil fortunately died far too young. He, um, he died of a heart attack on the 29th of December 2019. Neil was a great talent, very nice chap and he'll be sorely missed. Thanks for watching, goodbye.